Just do it! Well, I guess we better get started. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, a show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. And if you saw the intro, you know what we're doing today. I knew I'd get a couple of requests for the flash intro I snuck in, you know, in the last couple of episodes, but damn, you guys went crazy. So to relieve my sanity and the comment section below, I've moved the episode up from its original air date. Are you happy now? No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Let me finish, Shire. In order to complete this effect, you need to download the pack below in the description. It contains a template for the entire intro, including fonts and a rendered flare file. For those of you who don't have optical flares, I've also changed the text to read The Flash. So if you're particularly lazy, you can just download it and use it as is. But if you actually want to know how I did it, let's get started, shall we? Just do it! All right, let's do it. You heard Shire, let's do it. So firstly, let's take a look at the Flash title from the TV show. Now let's take a look at the one that I made. As you can see, it's not a perfect match, but it's as close as I can get to it. The font is a little different, and my text is a bit smaller, but it's pretty decent, and I'm not paying $40 for a font. So, let's get started. Open up a new comp, and let's call it Title, and give it a time of, say, 3 seconds. Our first point of order is to make this bottom layer here. So let's grab the text tool and type out flash. We'll then highlight the text, change the font to BN elements, or just have it set to that font. Either way works. Let's then bring in our reference still. That way we can size up our text a little so it matches as best it can. You may have to hit S and then unlink the scale settings clicking this thing here to get it just right. Let's then grab the eyedropper tool and pick a point that's representative of that bottom layer. That looks pretty good. Next, let's head up and grab a new adjustment layer. We'll then head over to Presets, type Slant, and add CC Slant. We'll then crank that up to say 33. If you find that your title moves off center like mine, just grab that slider under floor here and shift it back into position. All right, time to 3D this thing. Click here to enable 3D on the layer, and then we'll head up to the corner here and make sure this is labeled Ray Traced 3D. If it doesn't read Ray Trace 3D, click in here and change it like so. Next, head to your text layer and let's collapse down the menu until you find geometry options. All we're going to do here is make sure our bevel is convex, our bevel depth is 3, and our extrusion is set to 100. From there, hit R on the keyboard and scroll down until we find X rotation and dial it back to minus 26. Still looks like crap, I know. Time to add a light to the scene. Let's head up to layer and add a new light. In order to configure said light, let's double click on it and change a few things. We'll change the light type to spot, the color to more of a pale yellow, the intensity to 204%, check that cast shadows is all ticked and make sure fall off is set to none. Now that our parameters are done, we gotta put that light where we want it. Collapse down the lights menu and we wanna change these settings. Prepare yourself people, there's a lot of numbers coming. Firstly, the point of interest to 946.3, 748.7 and minus 868. Next, we're changing the position to 934.2, 695.5 and minus 1534.7. We'll then change the orientation to 331, 16, and 292. We'll then head down to the X rotation and change that to 17, and the Y rotation to 12. Now having said that, by all means have a play with this light and see what works for you. Just go nuts. Our last little step on this section is to add one more adjustment layer, head over to presets and type bevel. We'll then add a bevel alpha. Let's then change the edge thickness to 2 the light angle to 309, and the light intensity to 0.15. This just gives our text a fine little edge that looks kind of pretty. Now that we've done all that, let's hit Ctrl D, duplicating that layer. We'll then change the color to a darker bluey gray, like so. Collapse down those geometry settings and change the bevel depth to 2, the extrusion to 25, and then use the position controls to bring it up so that it sits on top of our initial layer there. That looks pretty good. 
Now, on to the next step, building the next two layers. Don't worry, this is much easier. Let's start by duplicating our text layer, right clicking on it and selecting pre-compose. We'll then open that up in a new comp and get started. From there, let's open that comp. We'll then collapse down the menu to our geometry options once more and this time we want to zero out both that bevel depth and the extrusion. We'll then change that text color to a greeny gray, like so. From there, let's duplicate this layer and then change the color once again to a light gray. Collapse down those pesky geometry settings one more time and we'll change the bevel depth to 1.3 just to make this layer a little wider than our top layer. We'll then use the position controls to put it just under our top layer and slightly off center too. That's looking great. Our next step here is to duplicate both layers, delete the text on each layer and type the in its place. We'll then bring that font size down on both layers to around about 60 to 62 and then with both layers selected, move them into place just next to that big old F. Now that we have those elements in place, let's switch back to our original comp and make sure everything's sitting correctly. If it isn't, just use the position controls to get it right where it needs to be. Okay, one more step to go and the text is done. Let's head back to our other comp and add two adjustment layers. On the first adjustment layer, we're gonna head up to effect, color correction and add exposure. We'll then crank that bad boy up to 3.86. From there, we'll grab the rectangle tool and draw a mask all the way across our text. We'll then hit F and feather it out around 45 pixels. We'll then collapse down the mask menu, hit the stopwatch on mask path, head to that five second point in the comp and move our mask up just a tad. This kind of sells the illusion that the text is reflecting light. Next, with our second adjustment layer selected, we'll head up to effect, generate and add a CC light sweep. Let's tweak this thing guys. Change the direction to 16, the light reception to composite, and then let's grab the center point here and put it off just to the side of our the. Hit the stopwatch and then let's scrub forward to the 2.5 second mark and place the center on the other side of our comp. If we check out a preview now, you can see this gives a little bit of a shimmer that you see in the title sequence on the TV show. Our last step in this comp, grab the comp that's marked lightning bolt logo and let's drop that in under our light shimmer adjustment layer. We'll then position it into place, and that's it. Whew, our text is finally done. That took some work. Now for the rest. Let's open up a new comp, give it a time of say three seconds, and name it final. That sounds good. Let's drop our title comp in, make it 3D, and it's time to animate its position. Hit P, hit that stopwatch, and let's scrub to the 219 mark. We'll then bring it forward slightly in Z space, about here is nice. We'll then skip ahead one frame, add another keyframe, then skip right ahead to the end of the comp and let's drag that Z space out until the text takes up the whole damn screen. Let's turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer and check out a preview. It's not bad, but it's time to add our lightning comp from the download pack. So scrub to the 207 mark in the comp, head over to the project menu, grab the comp named Final Lightning, Hold shift and drop it right on that 207 mark. We'll then scrub forward a few frames, head up to effect, generate and add a CC light rays. Let's move that center point into a good position. Maybe I'll scrub forward just a few more frames. We'll then hit the stopwatch on intensity. Skip forward a few more frames and crank that bad boy up past 600. We'll then backtrack to say the 213 mark and zero it out completely. This just sells the effect of that lightning exploding just a little bit more. Our last step is to head over to the project menu and if you have optical flares, grab the comp marked flare, drop it in and change the transfer mode to screen. Oh, and make sure that the end meets up with the end of the comp, just like that. Or if you don't, grab the video file named flare, drop it in and you're good to go. Just like with the flare comp, make sure you drag the video so it ends at the end of the comp. Now guys, as far as the actual making of the lightning layer, this episode is going on way too long as it is, so if you wanna know how it's made, I'll post a separate video on it. It's not overly hard, but it does involve a lot of steps and moving parts to make it work. But like I said, sound off in the comments if you'd like to know. In the meantime though, you can open up those lightning comps, have a poke around and see what I've done. If you check the download pack in the description, you'll see those animated flashes I've put at the start of each of the intros. 
They're all alpha channeled and ready to go. All you gotta do is just drag and drop them straight on top of your footage in Premiere. Add up all of those steps and you'll have something like this. So that's making the intro title sequence to The Flash. It's not overly complicated. Making that lightning takes a little bit of patience, but if you download the template, you can just skip that part entirely. Unlike me. Just a couple of things before we close this one up guys. If you click the link in the description, you can still vote for me in the My Road Reel short competition. And if you want to avoid waiting through all the content on this channel, because I know it's a pain sometimes, Learn Archer Films now has a website. It's up and running with everything in one easy location. So be sure and check that out. And while you're at it, please like and share this video. If you're new here, grope this here subscribe button. Keep up to date by hitting me up on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching again, gang. And as always, keep learning.